class about Michaelis Menten kinetics and we learned about what all the variables mean. Most importantly, we learned about the whole Michaelis Menten equation, uh, which includes Vmax, Km, and Kcat is found from the Vmax divided by the total enzyme. And so those are some important values. And you have a homework assignment about this. And what you learned in class is enough for you to solve this by estimating. But a lot of us like to have the more exact way of doing it. And that's the purpose of my making this video so that you can have that exact tool for using a nonlinear least squares curve fit model to find your exact values for Vmax and Km. And we can do this in Excel using the solver tool. Before I show you how to use that, I'm just going to review how you would find it by estimating. So if you have a grid of your substrate concentrations and your V0 initial velocity values for each of those concentrations, you can make an X by Y plot of those values and you get this nice hyperbolic curve. And we find our Vmax by seeing the asymptote at which this curve levels off. So to me, it looks like it's at about 25. That's about where this curve is leveling off. So that's what I would guess to be our Vmax is 25 nanomolar per second. Next, we know that half Vmax is lining up with the curve at the same x value that is km. So we take our estimated Vmax of about 25, cut it in half so we get about 12 or 13, and line that up with the curve. And on the x-axis, looks like that would be around two or three. So these are pretty good guesses, and they're actually better than the line weaver burke plot because the line weaver burke plot can skew some data unless you have perfect data. So it is actually better to do it this way, but the even better way to do it if you really want an exact answer is using computational tools. So next I'm going to show you how to use the solver. So our the first thing we do is we need to put in arbitrary values for Vmax and Km. We're going to have the solver optimize these values later. For now we'll just put in maybe like 5 and 10. And then we will use these arbitrary values that will be optimized later to solve for our theoretical V0. So maybe I'll put V0 T for theoretical. Um, because this is our V0 actual. Oh, that should be a. Oh, okay. So our V0, which is the V in this Michaelis Menten equation, is going to be equal to our theoretical Vmax. And we'll put dollar signs to lock that in place. Times the substrate concentration divided by the Km. Let's lock that in place again. Plus the substrate concentration. There's our Michaelis Menten equation. And now I'm going to put my cursor in the lower right hand corner of this cell and propagate it down throughout the whole data sheet. Great. So these are our theoretical V-naughts. Obviously they are pretty wonky right now because we aren't using very good values. We're going to optimize those in a minute. So the first thing we do to optimize that is we're going to make an error squared. So that will be our theoretical V-naught minus our actual V-naught. And it can be either direction because we are going to square it. So we won't have any negative values. And then we will propagate that down again. Okay, now we have all of these values. These are our square, squared errors. Next thing we're going to do is make a sum of these at the bottom. Okay. All right, so now we have a very compact system. We have this very large number, which is dependent on these two manipulatable variables. So the next thing we want to do is install our solver. I'm on the data tab right now in Excel, and normally you'd see the solver here, 
but it's a customizable feature and so you need to add it in. This is the part where the toolbars may vary, but on my Mac with this version of Excel, I'm going to Tools and I'm going to Excel Add-ins and I'm going to check Solver Add-in. Okay, give it a second and it popped right up. There it is. So now we'll pull up our solver and our set objective is this number right here. And I was doing this before so you can see it guessed at what I would want. But our goal for this number is to be for it to be as low as possible. So we keep it set on minimum. And then Yep, so <laughs> if that wasn't there, we would have our changing variable cells as Vmax and Km. So you just drag over them like that and it will take both of them. And make sure this is not checked. I don't know why, but it has a divide by zero error if you check this, so make sure it's unchecked. And now we're going to click Solve. Okay. We just give it a second to think about that. Give it another second. Okay, those numbers look good. And it's done solving. So we click OK, keep solver solution. So it optimized these numbers to make our error as low as possible. And so now we know with great certainty that our Vmax is 24.2 and our KM is 1.7. Pretty close to our estimations, but even closer. And now that you have that information, combined with the concentration of your total enzyme, you can guess what kcat would be. We know that it's equal to Vmax divided by the concentration of the enzyme. And so there's our kcat value. And that's how you use Solver. Um, if I have time, I'm going to make another video about using the Lineweaver Burke plot to look at inhibitors because that is the really good use of the Lineweaver Burke plot. It's not very good for finding these values, but it is good for looking at um, what kind of inhibitor you're working with. But that's how you use Solver. Thank you.